What's good, y'all? Your boy Ross back at again with another video. So we got to talk about what happened on the Go Home Show for um, Bad Blood tonight. Um, this was the last Monday Night Raw. Um, that will be three hours uh, for the remainder of this year. They're going to be going to two hours um, for the uh, first Monday of October next week. So it's the last Monday Night Raw. That's going to be two hours for the remainder of this year. And it's the go-home show for Bad Blood. Very excited about what was going to happen here um, for tonight's show. And overall, I definitely enjoyed what they put on the show and the stories that they were progressing. So we got to talk about them opening up the show. Jay Uso coming out there. He had his son with him <clears throat> at the top of the, uh, the arena area. Uh, where the crowd comes through he had his son with him so that was a cool moment and uh he came down to the ring to uh, uh a nice nice uh active crowd that was eating with him all the way to the ring and uh they gave him some pyro and stuff and he you know started to talk you know about his in him being the new intercontinental champion main event jay uso and the crowd giving them the you deserve a chance as he did deserve and there was a few moments where he wasn't really saying much but it seemed like he was very emotional uh, and then he started talking about his mother <clears throat> And he, you know, he even took off his glasses talking about his mother and saying how, you know, she believed in him and told him he, he can get the job done and 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 bring home the gold. Uh, also got to mention, they added a little bit of color to the Intercontinental Championship. They added blue throughout the different pieces of the Intercontinental Championship. I do like that touch. I, I think it, it, it definitely could have used a little bit more color. And I appreciate them adding that. So I thought that was pretty tough that they added a little bit more color to the Intercontinental Championship title. Uh, he also did mention the bloodline. He mentioned Roman Reigns and how his family kind of held him back or kind of, you know, was in his way in a sense of getting to this moment so he did mention roman you know family and roman kind of holding them back in a sense so or not wanting him to get to this point so that was a, you know a, a, a nice little tidbit to future situations because at some point i do feel like roman is going to try to get jade to come back and Jay most likely is going to be reluctant. I do feel like maybe the bloodline will be a reason why he ends up losing the Intercontinental Championship. So as he's celebrating, Braun Breaker comes out there. Braun Breaker comes out there. And we're all expecting him to, you know, talk his trash and probably hit him with a spear. But no, Braun came out there. He showed them respect. He said, I respect that Intercontinental Championship. And I respect the person that beat me, which was you. And I respect you, man. I took you lightly. And the better man won. He said, I'm not here to attack you. I'm not here to spear you. I just wanted to come out here and give you a respect. He shook his hand. And and even Jay hit him with the, you know, hey, it, are there any dogs in the house tonight? You know, and a whole bunch of crowd, uh, a whole bunch of the people uh, in the crowd were, you know, was barking like dogs. And he walked out the ring. And I said, this was his face turn. This was Braun Breaker's face turn. Now, of course, there were some people in the chat that was like, they weren't so sure. Maybe you'll attack them at the later at the end of the show. But no, later on in the show, uh, there was an interaction between Braun Breaker and Gunther. And Braun just walked up right to Gunther. He just wanted to get a look at the World Heavyweight Championship. Uh, Gunther and, and Ludwig was like, oh, you really are a badass. And he's just like, you know, just kind of, you know, smirking at him. He's like, you know what? I'll be seeing you soon. Yep, he's a face. Tonight, they turned Braun Breaker a face. I know some people may not like it, but I get why they did it. The crowd has been doing the barking like a dog, you know, everywhere he goes. You know what I'm saying? So it's just one of those type of things where um, it, it kind of, it made sense to turn him baby face. Because he's been getting pretty much face reactions. And I, I do think we're we're going to be setting that up. A Gunther versus Braun Breaker sometime down the line. But great opening segment for Jay. Jay definitely deserve it. Now, the segment and interaction I was looking forward to the most was the CM Punk and Drew interaction. Now, they had the Hell in a Cell cage already set up. So all they did was lower it and... Adam Pierce had a whole bunch of JAG security that was going to be in the ring between CM Punk and 
and uh, Drew McIntyre. And I like the fact that both wrestlers really sold the idea of this Hell in a Cell being such a demonic structure and them knowing that, you know, what happens on Saturday will forever change them. They really sold the idea of Hell in a Cell being a last resort. So I, I do appreciate that. Uh, CM Punk got in the ring first. No happiness, no jumping around, no it's clobbering time, no giving high fives to fans, straight business. He had on all white, and Drew comes out there in this like nice uh, suit, some, uh, some like, like a nice little suit get up all black on. He comes out there, and Drew starts talking first, and he's like, you know, you're probably wondering why I'm wearing all black. Well, it's going to be your funeral. It's going to be the end of you this Saturday. And, you know, I'm wearing this to pay respects. Not to you because I don't respect you. I hate you. But pay respects to your wife, you know, who's going to have to pretty much feed you through a tube when I'm done with you. And she'll probably end up leaving you. And Punk's not saying nothing. He just has this look of hate. And, you know, see him, uh, Drew's trying to get him to say something. He's like, oh, that's fine. You ain't got to say nothing. You know, I'm also going to be wearing this suit, not as a, a sad momentous, like a sad uh, remembrance of you, but no, as a joyous moment, uh, a joyous occasion that we finally, I'm the one that got rid of you. And then he he also talked about how um, when CM Punk went to NXT, I want to say it was last week. Or a week before last, and Roxanne Perez was a big fan of his, and then she realized, you know, that you know she's not a big fan of CM Punk. She more she likes Drew, and he started talking about how the fans have always continued to chant and and cheer for you, but they're just too stupid to realize uh, who you are. And you know, he even brought up the fact that you know I I wasn't always like this. You know, I, I didn't always have hate in my heart. You know, I used to have love and used to care about those who cared about me. But then I came in contact with you and now I had, you know, I had to learn to hate and use it as a weapon. And this Saturday in Hell in a Cell, I'm going to finally get rid of my hate when I destroy you. So he throws, you know, he puts down the mic. He's about to leave. And Adam Pierce gives the mic to CM Punk and CM Punk. You can tell. Is he's in the conversations he's had since he's been on back on television after you know what happened with Drew is there's no remorse there's there's nothing but just straight hatred and rage and he said that like I have so much anger and hatred and rage towards you I haven't been at home for the past four weeks I've been staying at a hotel for the past four plus weeks because for the past four weeks because of my state I don't want my wife to see the type of state I'm in I don't want her to be around me while I'm in this mode which I love the fact that they're selling that I can't be at home with the person I love the most because right now the mode I'm in, I want to destroy you. And I don't want to put that on her. She doesn't need to be around that energy. And he made it very simple. And this was such a really good promo because they didn't even touch each other. They didn't fight or nothing. This was just strictly words. And he, he basically said, when it's all said and done, I just want you to remember that you prayed for this. So whatever happens to you, what I'm going to do to you, you prayed for this. But when it's all said and done and I have you crawling, I have you begging, I have you bleeding and I wipe the blood from your eyes and you're looking up at me. And you're not going to be praying to God. You're not going to be praying to the devil himself. You're going to be praying to CM Punk. Essentially saying, I'm going to hurt you. I'm going to destroy you. When it's all said and done, when you're on your knees begging for mercy, it won't be the God, it won't be the devil, it'll be me that you're begging, begging for mercy. He even had a little kind of inside, you know, jab or insider no type jab. Um, only those would know what he's talking about. He, you know, he said, you know, I'm, I'm going to have to be the boogeyman that people claim me to be. And I like that. That's kind of more of a reference to, you know, 
people considering him this big, bad, evil person in AEW. So I do like that he said that, but you wouldn't only really like die hard, uh, you know, die hard wrestling fans would actually know he's referencing them without it being like a, a super obvious thing. So I did pick up on that. But overall, this was great. There was nothing but hate in that in that uh ring and i love every bit of it i hope this main events the show because it needs to main event the show this is the biggest feud they have put on and we're finally in the final hour and i can't wait to see how it plays out so this was great love this segment between both drew and cm punk we also got to talk about sammy uh once again trying to get gunther to uh put up that uh World Heavyweight Championship on the line. And uh, tonight he was able to get that done. Uh, Gunther came out there and he was like, man, I love being the World Heavyweight Champion. But the most annoying thing is to have someone like Sami Zayn asking every week to challenge me. Sami Zayn comes out there and he's like, man, let's keep it a buck. Why why you don't want to challenge me? What, what's wrong? Why, why you keep saying no? And... You know, he uh, Gunther, being the great heel he is, he told Sammy, well, I just think you're not on my level. I think you're below me. And Sammy said, well, that's interesting. You you say I'm below you, but I beat you at WrestleMania. I'm the one guy that beat you for the Intercontinental Championship. So I can't be below you if I beat you. What, what it really is, is you're scared. So Gunther's like, you're right. I am scared, but it's not that I'm scared of you. I'm scared to... Of my legacy being tarnished by you and and he talked about how you know his family sammy's family family is used to him losing but when gunther brought his family out to see him at wrestlemania his family is not loose used to used to seeing him lose and his father even told him when he got to the back how could you lose to a bum like Sami Zayn when his own father is calling Sami a bum it was only meant for Gunther to be a heel it's such a good heel man even when he's in even though he lost he still finds a way to find some type of reason to be above you even in a loss and Sami was like that's that's very interesting it seems as if you you're scared to face me again because you know how this ends. It seems to me as you're scared to essentially be called a loser um, by your father. And, of course, that triggered uh, Gunther. And, and Gunther started attacking him. Sammy started getting some type of offense in. He was about to go for the Huluva kick but ended up getting put in like a choke hold for a little bit. And then Gunther hit him, hit Sammy with a vicious power bomb so impactful that the back of sammy's head definitely hit the ring and as he uh picked up the mic he told sammy this is the match you want you got it you got your championship match and he walks out and 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 even though sammy looks like he he's concussed he's happy he's smiling because that's all he wanted and uh they're supposed to have their match next week which most likely sammy will lose but i do think it still will be a pretty good match and then after that segment that's when we got the whole situation with um braun breaker uh pretty much coming up to uh gunther to you know kind of let him know he got his eyes on that world heavyweight championship sometime down the line so next we get into the last monster standing match and they gave both the, uh, these guys their you know respective interviews braun breaker i'm uh, not braun breaker on uh, braun Strowman and um bronson reed talking about why they're going to be the last man standing and on bronson reed's interview he said you know they were talking about seth rollins and he told you know he's basically like yep yeah, you know I, I put seth rollins out you know for you know i took months off his career whenever he does come back i'm gonna take years off of his career and a lot of you guys spotted in the chat y'all kind of peeped that and some of y'all started to say well Maybe Seth will be returning much sooner. So we get to the main event. 
and it was what you expected just chaos table spots within the five first five uh, first five minutes it was uh bronson reed ended up going through the announce table they even went to the production table in the on the side where they do the pyro and stuff and two random tables with fucking paper cups and paper plates just neatly placed on them they went through that table they went through one barricade by the ring uh the the timekeepers area and then they went through the other barricade where there was some some supposed fans that got hit by the barricade and they were selling it obviously those were plants so they got all the officials to come out there to check on them but they weren't real fans because definitely they was real fans i would have been selling oh my god ah oh, take me to the emts ah oh. about to get that wwe payday so while that's going on bronson reed uh, hits two tsunamis, but he's trying to get the referee to get into the ring. So he gets the ref to come in there finally. But uh, um, uh, what's his name? Braun Strowman is able to, you know, go to the top rope. And, you know, the obligatory, everybody stands in one spot and, and wait for someone to fall. That's exactly what uh, Braun Strowman did. So Braun Strowman is trying to go to the top rope again. And that's when Bronson Reed cuts him off and uh, essentially suplex him from the second rope or into the ring. And then the ring explodes, implodes, breaks down or whatever. And a lot of you kind of caught it because they didn't have the LED ring post. They had the regular ring post. And I'm going to be honest with you, the spot didn't look that impactful only because I think one, they did it from the second rope to, a lot, you know, People that are in the know kind of could tell something was different. It, they had different ring posts. So it wasn't much of a surprise. And three, the impact. When it happened, it just kind of fell apart like Lego pieces. It wasn't like the Brock and um, Big Show one on SmackDown many, many years ago where they, I think they did a suplex from the top rope and there was a, it was a bounce to it. Like when they hit, there was a bounce and then one of the ring posts snapped. And with this, all the ring posts kind of imploded, but it didn't drop as much. It wasn't much uh, sound to them. I mean, it, it, it did look cool visually, but it just didn't have that oomph like some of the other ring post spots, you know, ring posts, you know, just breaking apart spots we've seen in the past. But that wasn't the best part because they were both down. The ref is counting and there's still steps in the ring. And Bronson Reed is, you know, leaning on the steel steps. Now the camera, whoever was the camera person, they you could see somebody running down the ramp. You wasn't supposed to see that, so I could see it was Seth Rollins, but you could, you know, you couldn't make out who it was. But you can kind of kind of tell if the camera was in a different spot, we wouldn't have seen who was running down the ramp. But you seen Seth running down the ramp. He gets in there and he hits the stomp onto Bronson Reed onto the steel steps and Braun Strowman answers the 10 count and is the last monster standing with the assist of Seth Rollins stomping Bronson um Bronson Reed onto the steel steps pretty much knocking him out so uh Braun Strowman uh stands tall in this uh uh um this uh last monster standing match and it looks like we're going to get a Bronson Reed Seth Rollins feud uh coming up next so that should be interesting but overall this was a solid show uh, I, I'm not gonna sit up here and uh say I didn't enjoy myself um I am looking forward to Raw going to two hours I think that's gonna be fun I think that's gonna you know pay, you know quicken up the pace on the show it's gonna be you know less time to see things that we you know tend to not care about so overall Y'all let me know how y'all felt about the Go Home show. I gave this like a solid 7, 7.5 out of 10. Y'all let me know what y'all rate the show on a scale of 1 to 10. And also, if you guys are excited that Bad Blood is this weekend, y'all let me know how excited y'all are. I appreciate all love, support, road to 150K. Appreciate y'all kicking in with me. See y'all next one. Peace.